I don't know. Maybe it's good, maybe it's not. Alright? Why would it be good to do that? Why would it be good to default it to Fahrenheit to centigrade? As Americans were. Yeah, as Americans we don't know. Yeah, we might want to do more conversions of Fahrenheit to centigrade. Or we might want to go the other direction. Right? I don't know. But it might be that the users of this page have a preference. Or more often than not, we want to do one of these conversions. Think, for example, if you were, for, for your assignment um, relating to um, calculating a tuition, all right, you might have a drop down for residency type, right? Well, most people that attend LCC fall into what residency category? Okay. Residents of the county, right? Let's say there aren't people from out of state or aren't people from out of county, but most people. So that might be a reasonable default. All right. So when you look at that, you look and say, is that a reasonable default? If it is, then fine. All right. If not, and there is no reasonable default, what we might want to do is we might want to put a dummy selection, a dummy option at the start of the drop down. All right. What will that do that will force the user to choose something so that they can't just erroneously not pay attention to that drop down and get the wrong conversion? You know, do the wrong conversion and it shows up that it's going to be 32 today, so they show up in a parka when actually it was 32 centigrade and they end up sweating too much. All right? So, what we're going to do uh, to close today, and again, next time we might spruce up the, the output a little bit. We might play around with the output. But what we're going to do to close today is put a dummy option in the drop down. All right? <clears throat> so, let me go back to the drop down. I'm going to go in here, edit items. I'm going to click Add to add an item. And my text is going to be Choose Conversion Type. And I'm going to leave that as Choose Conversion Type for now. Or, yeah, well, I'm going to actually blank it out because that's what I'd rather do. Now, it ain't going to do any good. Wait a minute, I'm being recorded. I better speak correctly. It would not do any good to have that dummy selection as the last option on the list, right? We want to make it the default when the page loads. So therefore, we want to bump that up to the top of the list. Now, what we have to do is keep it from doing anything if they have selected that list. Uh, or if they've selected that item from the list. So if they've selected the dummy item from the list, we don't want it to do the calculation. How do you suppose we could do that? Put a validator on it. Very good. I was expecting someone to say, well, in the code behind, we'll write some code. Too much work. You folks need to get lazier, all right, and look for things that, uh, that, that are already built into the framework. Exactly. I can put a required field validator for that dropdown. A dropdown is a little different than a text box, though, right? A text box, everyone knows what an empty text box is. A dropdown, what's an empty dropdown item? Because there's always a selected item. We have to designate that, hey, you know, this is what I mean by an empty item. So let's go in here and let's put a required validator on this. The error message I'm going to change to be must select conversion type. CSS class I'm going to put in as now, I have error temp. We'll, we'll leave that as that. That's fine. 
Control to validate is my drop down list. And I have to supply an initial value. All right. Since I left the initial, since I left the value of this item as blank, I will leave the initial value blank. If I, if the value of that item was choose conversion type, I would type in choose conversion type in here. Yes. In the code, will it show empty quotes automatically with that, or does it not even? Not well, you're not going to see the code. So, but yeah, it effectively would do that. All right. So now, let me go and do a little formatting of this guy. Let me put that in an LI. Now if I try to do a submit, ooh, something's wrong. It might be, I might have created that empty value as a space, and I have an empty string here. <coughs> so, so let's go in and make, choose a value. yeah, choose conversion type. Let's put the value of that in there. That will um, remove any ambiguities. And then I'll make the value of that item, choose conversion type. My guess is it didn't know that that was empty because in one case it was using a space, one case an empty string. So it's probably not a good idea to use a, a space, use a, use a dummy value. So now if I go and run this. All right, you have to enter both in. The bottom line is, you should decide whether it makes sense to have a default on a dropdown based on whether it makes sense to have a default for a dropdown, not because I don't feel like writing validation code. All right. So if it really made sense to have Fahrenheit to centigrade as, as the default conversion uh, here, then yeah, make it that. All right. But if it doesn't make sense to have any of them defined as a default, then um, put a dummy in. Um, the disadvantage of having a default, all right, is that you could have someone absentmindedly clicking through without changing it and, and doing the wrong thing. The disadvantage of having um, a having no default and having a dummy value is you force people to enter something in even though maybe a high percentage of them always want the same option. You're, you're adding an extra step to the process. So you have to decide which problem you want to live with. I've often said design is deciding what problems you want to live with. And again, there's typically advantages and disadvantages to any number of ways of doing things and you just have to decide for this particular situation what makes sense. Yes? You can do a, uh, a compare validator on that too, on the, on the uh, value of the drop-down. If it equals zero, kill it. No, because a compare validator doesn't compare up against a value. It compares up against another control. Oh, okay. I thought you could compare it against if it's no. larger than zero. No, no. You could compare it to another control, or you can compare it to a data type check. But, yeah, you can't compare it uh, to a value. Essentially, that's what this is doing, is comparing it up against uh, that. Yes? If you're using something in the, if you're not using something in a formula, should you define it with a dem? If you're defining a username or something like that, and you're not really putting it in a command statement, should it still be defined as a string or integer or something like that? If you have a form item that you're not doing,
doing anything with, yes. you would not need to define a variable for it. Um, now let's let's back up. Now perhaps in in an exercise, I may ask you to have a, a username or something like that. But um, in real applications, you'd very rarely have that, right? If if you're not doing anything with it, why would you even have the form item? So I mean, it's possible for an assignment that I would say, you know, enter this in just so you could practice making a text box and a validation or whatever. But in a real scenario, if it's on the form, you probably want to do something with it. Otherwise, you wouldn't need to have it on the form. All right. I will save this example and post it and along with um, the video and knock on wood. I hope the video comes out okay. We'll find out. All right. We'll see you over in lab.